Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be covering multiple alleles and autosomal linkage from the inheritance topic from the A-level biology curriculum. If you haven't watched my last video on inheritance, I would highly advise you to watch it. The link should be popping up now. Okay, so starting with multiple alleles. So multiple alleles is where we have more than two alleles or a phenotype in the population. On our previous examples, we've only really looked at two alleles for a phenotype. For example, we might have had a capital A and a lowercase a. Now, when we have multiple alleles, we might be able to have another allele instead of just them two. A very common example is of blood types. So in blood types, we can have up to three alleles. So we could have IA, which is producing antigen A. We could have IB, which is producing antigen B. Or we could have IO, which is producing neither of these antigens. So in this case, our alleles have a subscript. So we would have I as the base, and we could have either A, B, or O as a subscript. And what you also need to know is that the allele IA and IB are co-dominant. So they're both equally dominant and they are both equally expressed. Whereas the allele IO is recessive and to both um, allele IA and IB. Now if we had the genotype IA, IA, we would be coding for antigen A and we would have the blood group A. And if we were coding for, if we had the genotype IA, IO, then we would be coding for antigen A. And remember that IO does not code for any antigen, so we would still have the blood group A because we would only have antigen A produced. Now, on the other hand, if we had IB, IB, um, we would only have the antigen B produced, so that's why we would have blood group B. And the same as before for IB, IO, we would only have antigen B, so blood group B. Now for IA and IB, because both IA and IB are co-dominant, both of them will be e equally expressed. These would be producing both antigen A and antigen B, so that's why they would have the blood group AB. And finally, with uh, the genotype IO, IO, now neither of these code for any antigen, so that's why we would just have blood group O. So we just don't have any antigen in this case. And just going through a couple of examples for these. So in the first example, I've been told that the father has blood group A and the mother has blood group B. And show that they can have an offspring with all four uh, blood types. So uh, I know that the four blood types I can have is either A, B, AB, and O. I know that the father has blood group A, so that could either be I A I A, or it could be I A O and I O. And the mother could either be I B I B, or she could be I B I O. So I've been told that I need to code for all four of the blood types, uh, and I know that to code for blood type MO, I need to have IO, IO. To get the genotype IO, IO, I would require IO from both the father and the mother, and because IO is a recessive allele. So in this case, I can only have IA, IO for the genotype of my father, and IB, IO for the genotype of my mother. And now I can just simply cross them, so that would be IA, IB, then that would be IB, IO, this would be IA, IO, so I'm, I'm going for the codominant allele first, so IA or IB first, so, and finally it would be IO, IO, so these are my four alleles, so in, in this example, so I could either have IA, IB, which I know would be coding for a blood group AB. And I could have IA, IB, which would be, um, which would be producing my antigen A and would be blood group A. 
I could have my IB IO, which would be my uh, blood group B, and I can finally have my um, genotype IOIO, which would be blood group O. So in that case, I have produced all four uh, blood types, and I've shown it using a genetic diagram. And going on to the next example, so they've told me that the father has the blood type AB and the mother has the blood type O. And it's asking me for the probability that they will have a girl with the blood type A. So for the father, the blood type is AB and I know the only uh, genotype that could be is IAIB. There is no other way. And for the mother, it can only be IOIO. There is no other way again. So then I can just simply cross them. So that would be IA, IO, and it would be IB, IO, then IA, IO, and finally IB, IO. Is the only way of getting to blood type A is by the genotype IA, IO, because in this case we only have two genotypes and the other one would be coding for the blood type B. And from this, because we have two uh, from out of the four, then I know that this will be uh, 50%, uh, or it can be 0 0.5. Now, this is not my final answer, because they haven't just simply asked me what is the probability of having blood type A. They've also said that it will be a girl, it will be a girl and blood type A. So what I know is that there is an equal chance of getting a girl and a boy. So a half or we have 0 0.5. So what we simply do is we would just times them together. So it'd be 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 and we will end up getting 0 0.25. Okay, so now moving on to autosomal linkage. So humans have 23 chromosomes and autosomal linkage can happen in the 22 non X chromosomes. So out of the 23 chromosomes, we have 22 non sex chromosomes, which are also known as autosomes, and we have one chromosome which is a sex chromosome. Okay, so what autosomal linkage basically is, is where we have two genes which are located on the same chromosome or the same autosome, and what we can say is that the genes are linked. So we would have to have a dihybrid. Across, so we would have to have two characteristics for a autosomal linkage. So I'll go through an example now. So we have the genotype capital C, lowercase c, capital A, and lowercase a. So in that case, we have two characteristics. So one would be from C, uh, from the gene C, and one would be from the gene uh, of A. So normally in a dihybrid cross, we would be able to get four. Uh, genotypes out from this. So we would be able to have uh, a ca capital C, capital A, so going from the first uh, first and the third letter, so that would be capital C, capital A, then the first and the last letter, so that would be capital C, lowercase a, the second and the third letter now, so lowercase c, uh, capital A, and then finally lowercase, and so the second and the last letters, so that would be lowercase c and lowercase a. Now, this is what normally happens in a dihybrid cross. Uh, but in our autosomal linkage, when our genes are linked together, and we would only end up forming two gametes from it instead of forming four. So showing how it happens. So in this case, our genotype is capital C, lowercase c, capital A, and lowercase a. So to form our autosomal linkage, what we tend to do is we get the first letters. Um, letter. So in this case, this is the capital C, uh, and we just put it there, and then we get the third letter, which is capital A. So that would be capital C, uh, capital A. And then we get the second letter, which is small case C, and we get our last letter, which will be lowercase a. So just visualizing this, so as you can see, um, our capital C, capital A is paired, and our lowercase C, lowercase a is paired. But we cannot uh, link a uh, capital C and lowercase a, small case, uh, small case, uh, small case C and capital A. So this is our autosomal linkage. Okay, so going through an example now. So I'll use the same example as my uh, dihybrid cross, but this time with autosomal linkage. 
So I had heterozygous round, heterozygous yellow piece. So that was capital R, lowercase y, low, capital Y, lowercase y. So in this case, when I get my autosome linkage, I will have my first R. Uh, so that's the capital R. Uh, the third letter, which will be my capital Y. So that would be uh, capital R, capital Y. And then I will have my lowercase r and my lowercase y. So these would be my gametes. I won't be able to form the other two uh, in this case. So as you can see, I have r and my capital r and my capital y linked and my lowercase r and my lowercase y linked. So now if I was to cross two of the heterozygous round, heterozygous yellow now, so I would have capital R, capital Y. Uh, and then my lowercase r, lowercase y, and again capital R, capital y, uh, lowercase r, lowercase y. So it's like a monohybrid cross now instead of a dihybrid cross. So then I'll have my capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y, and then my capital R, low, lowercase r, then capital Y, lowercase y, capital R, uh, lowercase r, capital Y, lowercase y, and then um, lowercase r, lowercase r, um, lowercase y, lowercase y. So for a dihybrid cross, we had the ratio 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. But in this case, if, if we're comparing the ratios, I can see that there is 1, 2, 3. So in three of them, we have dominance in both. So that, so that would be uh, yellow and round. So we have three there. And then the only one left is both recessive uh, traits. So that would be the uh, green and the wrinkled one. So in, in this, we only really have a three to one ratio. So now because of this, we should only really have yellow and round and green and wrinkled peas in our phenotype. But as you can see in, the, in this case, we have all four, all four phenotypes and we observe all four of them. And you can be asked why this happens. Now this happens because uh, of crossing over. So crossing over can occur in meiosis and this can create a new combination of gametes or alleles and it can lead to all four phenotypes being presented. So as you would be able to see in this example, so at the start we had lowercase r and lowercase y linked uh, and we had the capital R and the capital Y linked but then crossing over occurred as you can see here, the capital R is crossing over with lowercase r, so the alleles would be exchanged, so we would end up getting new gametes. So that's why we have now four uh, different uh, gametes, where we would only have two gametes, now we have four because of crossing over, and that's why we observe four different uh, phenotypes. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like this video, don't forget to subscribe to see more of these and you can watch my recent videos by clicking on the links popping up. Thank you.